Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. During this short application exercise, we're going to build a functional circuit on the motor control trainer board by wiring up the magnetic reversing motor starter circuit with electrical and mechanical interlocks we introduced in the magnetic reversing motor starters with interlocks lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched this lecture yet or only dimly recall its contents, please take the time to do so now. Additionally, this exercise operates under the presumption you have watched the preceding lectures detailing the progressive construction of the motor control trainer board. An extremely common magnetic reversing motor starter, as implemented in the above reference lecture, makes use of paired contactors wired such that one contactor induces a motor to turn in one direction and another contactor that induces the motor to turn in the opposite direction by swapping applied phase sequence. What is vitally important to the safe operation of this system is that these forward and reversing contactors are never to be simultaneously closed. Not only does the act of simultaneously spinning a motor clockwise and counterclockwise not make sense, the closure of both contactors is an event where two phases run headlong into each other with no current controlling element between. Such an event can be characterized by dangerous arc flash and potentially destroy a system and injure or kill nearby personnel. For this reason, interlocks exist to prevent this most undesirable of occurrences. Common interlock methods include mechanical, electrical, and push-button interlocks. A mechanical interlock is quite literally a mechanical stop that prevents the physical movement of the opposite contact carrier when the other is moved into place. The opposite contactor coil can still be energized, however, the contact carrier just can't physically move. An electrical interlock, in contrast, is a means of preventing the opposite contactor coil from being energized when the other is energized. The opposite contact carrier can still physically move, however, the contactor coil just can't be electrically energized. For this reason, mechanical and electrical interlocks are often paired together. The mechanical interlock prevents physical movement of the opposite contact carrier and the electrical interlock prevents the opposite contactor coil from being energized. This complementary double layer of protection ensures nothing unwise happens either electrically or physically and ultimately allows only one contactor at a time to be closed. Push-button interlocking is a means of supplementing mechanical and electrical interlocking and is not meant to replace these methods. A push-button interlock deselects one mode when another is selected. We'll examine push-button interlocking when we discuss plugging circuits in later lectures. The latter logic governing the magnetic reversing motor starter with mechanical and electrical interlocks is essentially a three-wire control circuit independently governing the action of the forward contactor and another governing the reversing contactor. Both these circuits make use of holding contacts that maintain the last asserted state. These two circuits influence each other's states via the mechanical and electrical interlocks. When the forward contactor coil is energized, the F2 electrical interlock prevents the reversing contactor coil from being energized when an operator presses the reverse button. Additionally, the mechanical interlock prevents the reverse contact carrier from physically moving. This prevents the manual override from being used to close both contactors simultaneously. Note that one normally closed overload contact serves to de-energize the circuit in the event of a sustained overload in either direction. The circuit should exhibit no or low voltage protection characteristics in that if there is an unexpected loss and restoration of power, the system will not automatically restart because the holding circuit in either direction will drop out. Thus, an operator is protected from the sudden restart of the motor-driven load. Only when an operator makes the conscious decision to restart the system does it do so. Additionally, this circuit should exhibit similar behavior if the motor ever entered overload conditions and the overload element was given a chance to cool and reset. The system should not automatically restart until an operator makes the conscious decision to do so. Circuits like this one are commonly used in scenarios where the sudden unexpected starting of the motor may damage the system or operator. Before we begin, let me remind you, I am not an electrician and you cannot use anything in this or any other lecture as professional electrical advice. Follow the rules, follow the code. It's there for a reason, to protect people and property from hazards arising from the use of electricity. Some of the material and techniques you may see in this lecture may not be utilized for a permanent approved installation, but is for demonstration purposes only. 
This content has been developed for edification only. While reasonable care has been exercised with respect to its accuracy, I assume no responsibility for errors, omissions, or suitability for any application or misapplication of its contents. First, we need to establish a start state and assemble the necessary components. We've already built a base motor control trainer board. The base state consists of a circuit breaker, control transformer, and manual motor starter. Note the control transformer is not expressly illustrated in the first primary circuit. You'll need to remove any and all previous circuit connections and return it to just the circuit breaker, control transformer, and manual motor starter. Additionally, we'll need one push button station with a maintain contact A stop and three momentary contact push buttons colored red, green, and yellow. Red will be stop, green will be forward, and yellow will be reverse. Next, we need to assemble the primary circuit consisting of paired contactors. This is the most interesting part of this lecture, and the portion which I'd like to focus most of our energy and time on today. The magnetic reversing motor starter with electrical and mechanical interlocks will require two contactors, two auxiliary contact blocks, one overload, and a mechanical interlock unit, and optionally, a pre-configured reversing motor starter wiring kit. This is where you will appreciate this particular manufacturer's means of pairing these contactors for a magnetic reversing motor starter. Start by bringing the contactors into close physical proximity and clipping the base together using the provided clips. Then, install the mechanical interlock unit on top. The mechanical interlock prevents the physical movement of the opposite contact carrier. By all means, test it out. Now, since we'll be making use of electrical interlocks, install the auxiliary contact blocks on top. Now, we need to wire the paired contactors such that one contactor swaps applied phase sequence. Let's call the one on the left forward, the one on the right is reverse. If you are into saving time and avoiding confusion, let's make use of a handy pre-configured reversing wire kit provided by this manufacturer. It may take some time and consideration on your part to determine how this kit works using the provided data sheet. This particular kit comes with two sets of pre-configured wires one set for the top and the other set for the bottom. You'll note each set of wires is really two parts held together with plastic links. Certain contactors and configurations necessitate both parts, some of them don't. For our purposes, we only need the larger three wire section for the top set. Clip it and toss the other. This three wire top set effectively routes primary power to both contactor primary terminals. Insert it and tighten the terminals. The bottom set is where the magic happens. This pre-configured set not only swaps L1 with L3 for the reversing contactor, it also ties together the A2 terminals of both contactor coils. You'll note this pre-wired set cuts out a lot of the busy work, mess, and guesswork when it comes to painstakingly wiring individual wires in both the primary and pilot level circuit. Different manufacturers may make use of alternative means to mechanically interlock and wire paired contactors. For example, this particular manufacturer's mechanical interlock is sandwiched between the paired contactors and makes use of wires to perform the phase swap. Our primary circuit now requires a single overload relay utilized by both contactors. Clip the overload relay to the bottom of the paired contactors, insert the terminals, and tighten them. We have assembled the business end of a magnetic reversing motor starter. You'll note the 1-4 terminals of the normally open auxiliary contacts remain accessible for both contactors, as do the conjoined A2 terminals of both contactor coils. Believe me, not all manufacturers make it this easy and this pretty. Primary power will still be routed to both contactors L1, L2, and L3 terminals. When the forward contactor is closed, phase sequence at the output of the overload will be L1, L2, L3. In contrast, when the reversing contactor is closed, phase sequence at the output of the overload will be L3, L2, and L1, thanks to the pre-configured reversing wire kit. The mechanical interlock makes it impossible to physically close both contactors at the same time. Now we need to wire up the pilot level ladder logic. For a change of pace, I'm leaving this up to you, 
but not without a bit of guidance. As I previously mentioned, the important part of this lecture is pairing the reversing contactors, and I'd like wiring the pilot circuit to be a test of your skill and discipline. Let's at least make our job easy by inserting terminal and wire numbers on our ladder logic diagram using the skills we established in the ladder logic documentation lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. By all means, pause the lecture and take your best shot. If you numbered the terminals and wires correctly, your ladder logic diagram should look like this. Note wire 1 is the left hand vertical upright, and wire 2 is the right hand vertical upright. Additionally, Note I've made use of the lowest ordered auxiliary contacts possible. While not essential to the proper functionality of this system, it is a recommended practice. Next, see if you can mentally walk yourself through this circuit using the skills I demonstrated in the Wiring the Alarm Circuit lecture, available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you'll recall, I emphatically recommended you wire a ladder logic diagram left to right, top to bottom, rung by rung. By all means, pause the lecture and do so. Ask yourself where the wire of interest comes from and where it goes to in that rung and in that rung only. Continue in this fashion left to right. Only when you land at the grounded X2 side of the control transformer is that rung complete and you are allowed to move down to the next rung. This saves you a lot of second guessing and backtracking and ensures a completed functional product at the end. Start establishing good work practices now. If you use this method, you'll have a greater chance of success in less time. If you don't use this method, you'll have a greater chance of failure in more time. Your choice. Quick hint, wire numbers are best thought of as nodes. You'll note wire 4, 5, 7, and 8 are all pooled connections and only convenience dictates which terminal is physically employed to the best advantage. You cannot make this decision until you're actually physically wiring up the real circuit. Additionally, note part of wire 7, the pooled connection of both contactor coils A2 terminals, has already been made by the handy set of pre-configured reversing wires. All right, with your mental tour complete, see if you can wire this circuit up on your own. Take your time and have your lab partner or lab instructor confirm and inspect your work. Start by making sure the system is safe to work on. Open the manual motor starter. Open the circuit breaker. Unplug it. Lock out the plug and tag it out. Assuming you're successful in this venture, let's now build the primary circuit. All we've got to do is route three wires out of our manual motor starter and into one side of the paired contactors. The remaining primary connections have already been made by the handy set of pre-configured reversing wires. Three wires now come out of the overload and into the motor. That's it. Our magnetic reversing motor starter with mechanical and electrical interlocks is ready to rock. Let's put it to the test. When the system is unlocked, plugged in, and both the circuit breaker and manual motor starter closed, the system does a whole lot of nothing. That's the point. An operator has not placed this system in forward or reverse mode. When an operator presses and releases forward, the left contactor physically closes and the motor rotates in one direction. While in forward mode, the closure of the reverse button serves no purpose since the electrical interlock provided by the contact F2 does not allow the reversing contactor coil to be energized. When an operator presses and releases stop, the forward contactor physically opens and the motor free spins to a halt. When an operator presses and releases reverse, the right contactor physically closes and the motor rotates in the opposite direction. While in reverse mode, the closure of the forward button serves no purpose since the electrical interlock provided by contact R2 does not allow the forward contactor coil to be energized. When an operator presses and releases stop, the reversing contactor physically opens and the motor free spins to a halt. Finally, when in either mode, the e-stop serves to not only de-energize the motor, but also disable both the forward and reverse button until it is reset. Our magnetic reversing motor starter with mechanical and electrical interlocks functions as intended. We'll examine this system's response to loss and restoration of power and overload conditions, as well as some troubleshooting scenarios in a later lecture. All right, this about wraps up this brief applications exercise. In conclusion, we built and tested a magnetic reversing motor starter with electrical and mechanical interlocks using our motor control trainer board, 
and basic motor control kit. We made use of two contactors, two auxiliary contact box, a mechanical interlock unit, and a pre-configured reversing wire set. Part numbers appear in the orientation to the basic motor control trainer kit and the information section associated with this video. Thank you very much for your attention and interest. We'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource and be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.